give you all the praise in this place this morning. We lift up your wonderful name. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. Glory. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. He's so wonderful. I can't help but see. Glory to the King. Glory to the King.
1 Samuel 2 and 30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Now God doesn't change. He is the Lord God. He changes not. And he's not the son of man that he should repent. But he will change what he does on some things depending on what people do or don't do. Well, in that case, who changed? It wasn't him that changed. His will's the same. His plan's the same. His ways are the same. But uh, it, we went into some detail on this uh, a number of months ago, talking about uh, You Choose is the title of a series that we were into for a while, uh, how that God is not controlling everybody and everything. This, this idea that God is in control, and by that I mean everything that happens is somehow under and by the control of God is simply not true. Amen. That's right. I said it is not true. The truth is there are all kind of things happening in this planet that have nothing to do with God, Amen. that are not His will, that don't please Him, they're not His plan, they're actually contrary Amen. to Him, His will and His plan. And the truth is, Unless you ask him, unless somebody asks him to get involved and believes him to get involved in so many things, he's simply not in it. Now, it didn't take long to say that, but that is radically different than how many church going people believe. Hmm? But don't just take my word for it. If that sounds new to you, uh, get that serious and get in there and get immersed with this. It's called uh, You Choose. Did I say it right? Yeah. You Choose. And there's a bunch of sessions. And go through the scriptures with us and, and see it. Let the Word talk to you and minister to you. There's a lot of tradition of men that we need to get free from. A lot of stuff that people have heard in church Amen. that just ain't so. Right. Hmm? So uh, the Lord says here, you can see, he said this was going to be this way, but now it's going to be this way. Well, he didn't change his mind. God didn't change. He said, I'm going to honor the ones that honor me. Well, whose choice was it whether they honored him or not? Hmm? I, I had... Some people heard some people railing about some things. They said, well, if God really exists and he really is love, how's a, a God who is love going to send human beings to a place of eternal hell and torment? What kind of God would do that? And some years ago thinking about, well, Lord, if, how, how do I answer that as one of your ministers? How do I answer that question? And I mean just as clear, I don't mean I heard a voice, but just as clear inside me, he said, it's not my choice. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. You believe that or not? Yes. Which That actually set me on the course of studying the Word that produced some of these series like you choose. That's right. That was some of the very impetus that put me on the course because if that's true, so again, I asked myself the question, I, I believed it was him, but I need to see it in the Word. That's right? right? right. It's, not, it's not his choice. It's not his choice. Well, there's a whole lot of things that's not his choice. He really has given us a free will. Right. Well, how is it his fault if we choose wrongly? It's not. Huh? It's not. So God's not sending people to hell. People are simply choosing not to be with Him. Well, if you don't want to be with Him, you're not going to like the other place. 
Right? <laughs> but if you're going to blaspheme and reject him and despise him, that's where you wind up. And it wasn't his choice. How many want to choose him and everything he has for you? Huh? Say it out loud. It would be a good thing for you to say it publicly. Out loud. Say it out loud. Lord, Lord I choose you. I choose you. <laughs> Everything within me, my, my heart, my will, my soul, my desire, it's my choice to believe you and to follow you. Come on, say it again. I choose you. I choose Jesus. Yes. I choose the Master. I choose the Father, the Creator of heaven and earth. I choose God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. He said, Them that honor me, I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Now, uh, one of the greatest ways that God honors us is with his presence. Go with me to the book of Psalms, please. Psalm 139. One of the greatest ways that God honors us is with his presence, with his manifested presence. What if you're having a birthday party or you're having some kind of gathering? We're having some kind of meeting or some kind of service. And this famous, internationally known, beloved person shows up at it, comes to it. Did they honor you yes. by coming to your function, by being a part of your thing? Yes. yes, they have honored you greatly. They didn't have to show up there, right? By them showing up there and being there, They've honored you. Well, there's none greater than the Lord our God. And for him to show up <laughs> at a thing, and by that I mean to manifest his presence there, is of the greatest honor that can be bestowed. Who's he going to honor like that? From our text, who's he going to honor like that? It's not indiscriminate. It's not random. There's a connection. Hmm? There's a reason why God manifests himself more in some places than other places. Why is it? Come on, tell me from the scripture. Why is it? Because some people honor him more than others. Right? Who's he going to honor? Those that honor him. Those that honor him. Now, God is in spirit everywhere, but he's not manifested in the same measure to the same degree everywhere. Psalm 139 talks about this. Psalm 139, 7. He says, where shall I go from your spirit or where shall I flee from your presence? Keep going. If I ascend up to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. Keep going. If I take the wings of the morning, dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, then the night will be light about me. The darkness hides not from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. Now that's interesting. Why would that be? Huh? Because when he gets there, <laughs> I don't care how dark it was or how long it was dark. Before he got there, when he gets there, it's not dark anymore because he is light. That's, so the darkness and the light are like, just alike to him. <laughs> the Bible tells us in time to come that the new heavens and the new earth, we're not even going to have a sun. We're not going to need one because the Lamb is the light. Yes. 
Isn't that something? Yes. Hallelujah. But now we know it said, if I ascend up into heaven, you're there. If I go to hell, you're there. But how many think the presence of God is not sensed the same in hell as it is in heaven? <laughs> you can't say God doesn't know anything about it or he's not aware of anything because he is there by virtue of his, his omnipresence. But he is not perceived the same. He is not sensed the same. He is not manifested the same everywhere. There are places on this planet, in this earth, that are dark spiritually. Amen. If you flew over there, uh, there's some places in this country that ain't that hot. I mean, you, you go and you step off and you would feel like this is a God forsaken place. You would think, man, God ain't here. And yet he is. You can't say he's not there in the sense that he doesn't exist there. His spirit is there simply not manifested, not made known not revealed. Amen. Anybody with me? Yeah. He is everywhere around us. And in Romans, put this up on the screen for us, Romans 1 and 19, he said, that which may be known of God is manifested in them or to them, for God has showed it to them. Now this is talking about unbelieving people. Verse 20, for the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are what? Clearly. Clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. When people say there is no evidence of God, there is no proof of God, that is a big fat lie. Amen. That's right. Everything you see Amen. is evidence of God. Right. I'm talking about Creation, Amen. the fact that there's a planet, yes. the, the mountains, the oceans, the trees, the flowers, you, me. Amen. Hmm? Amen. How'd they get here? See, that's why there's such a push to take God out of it. Hmm? But it's a willing ignorance. Nobody, people say, well, we, we've removed God. We don't have to. We have science now. We have understanding we have the Big Bang. What caused the Big Bang? Huh? We know, we know about the origin of life. No, you don't. You can follow conception. You can follow how the babe develops in the womb. But what makes the baby go from stage one to stage two? Hmm? You can't see the origin of life under a microscope. That's right. We can see that sure, the, the, we've learned a few little things, not much compared to what there is to know. But you can find, yeah, this nerve impulse comes from this region of the brain, makes the heart pump, you know, and, and this causes, yeah, but what is fueling it from the inside? What, what's in the, you, and if you know, understand the word, you know that the brain is not the mind. That's right. That's right. It's just a physical organ. When people say, isn't it amazing? All of these creations, all of the art and music and engineering and everything has come out of these couple of pounds of gray tissue matter. <laughs> no, it didn't. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Amen. The, f the brain is a physical organ. If, you if, if your brain was surgically removed, you'd still be you and you'd still have your mind. You just couldn't express yourself. Exactly, man. Well, the father of spirits has created spirit beings. Thank you, Lord. And you are not, and I are not just created beings, angels, but we are also born of him. We are his own sons and daughters Amen. in his family. Amen. Being actually 
earth is prep school. Yeah. It is. He's prepping us for what comes next. We're being uh, groomed to be kings and priests and to rule and reign with him in the ages to come. What an honor. Somebody say, what an honor. What an honor. But here and now, in this world, full of darkness, we, we saw last time God does hide himself. Isaiah talks about that. But also, he is a God who reveals himself. It's just he doesn't reveal himself to everybody. Hmm? And he doesn't reveal himself to everyone to the same degree. Is it an honor for God to manifest himself to you yes. and to your family, in our, in our church, in our services, in our houses, right? Is it an honor? Yes. Who's he going to do that for and who's he going to do that more for? Those who, honor those who honor him and those who honor him more. Do you have a desire? Yes. To honor him more than you ever have yes. so that he has access to you, right? And is able to reveal himself and manifest himself more to you than he ever has before. In John, John 14 and 20, Jesus said, At that day you shall know that I'm in the Father and you in me and I in you. He's talking about the day you and I live in right now. Is he in us? Yes. Are we in him? Yes. Keep going. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will what? Manifest, Manifest myself to him. Amen. Reckon you could count on what the Lord said. Yes. He said, you do this, and I'm going to manifest myself to you. Amen. We know he doesn't fail. So we don't need to work on his part of begging him to manifest himself to us. Amen. Hmm? We need to work on our part, which is doing what he told us to do. Now, when he says, keep my commandments, don't immediately let your mind go to the uh, Ten Commandments. But also in, in remember what he said in 1 John. In fact, just, just turn there. Go to 1 John. Third chapter, verse 21, 321. He said, Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive of him. Why? Why? Because we keep his commandments. And we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now let's just stop right here. Can you think of anything that pleases God? Faith. One thing jumps to mind, right? Faith. Without faith it's impossible to please him. And you actually see that in the very next verse here, right here. This is his commandment. Here is the New Testament summary of keeping God's commandments. This is his commandment. What? Number one, that you do what? Believe. That you believe. There's faith in it. Amen. That you believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. And number two, do what? Love, Love one another as he gave us commandment. Now, if we'll do these, verse, verse 24, and he that keeps his commandments dwells in him, and he in him, and hereby we know that he abides in us by the Spirit which he has given us. Somebody say, you mean we don't have to keep the Ten Commandments anymore? You do this and you will keep them. Amen. Hmm? Right. If I love you, I'm not going to steal from you. Right. Right? right? I'm not going to lie to you or own you. Huh? I'm not going to covet what you have and try to take it away from you. Or, uh, the Bible said in Romans, it says that uh, uh, love is the fulfilling of the command. And you, he that walks in love, you, you'll do your neighbor no harm. Amen. Right? Amen. 
So if I love the Lord God with all my heart and all my mind, soul, and strength, if I believe in the one He sent, Jesus, and, and I love you with the love He's put in me, I am in doing that going to keep the commands of, of God. Amen. And, and when I do that, what's, he, what's Jesus going to do? Amen. If I keep His commands by doing that, what's He, what's he going to do? He is going to manifest Himself to me. Would I know it yes. if God manifested Himself yes. to me? Yes. Now, if we read the rest of that passage, uh, one of the disciples spoke up and said, Now, Lord, how are you going to manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And he repeated, If you love me, you'll do what I tell you to do. And my, the Father will come. We'll make our abode with you. And you, going back to the previous verse, I'll manifest myself to him. I'll make myself real and clear to him. Now, we're given an example uh, uh, quoted in the New Testament referring back to the Old Testament of God's manifested presence. We need to go back. Did you know uh, you, you make a mistake if you neglect the Old Testament? Amen. The writers of the New Testament assume you know the Old Testament. Amen. They're continually referring to it. Go to Exodus, please. Moses had run away from Egypt because of things that had happened there. He thought his brethren would understand that God was calling him to be a deliverer, but they didn't. <laughs> you know, God doesn't tell everybody else what he called you to do. <laughs> you know, Joseph told his brothers his dream. I think there's probably years he thought about it and said, I wish I hadn't told him that. <laughs> but in the end, God still brought it to pass. Make plans to join us for the Greater Faith Conference 2015 with Brother Keith Moore at Faith Life Church in Sarasota, Florida, February 2nd through the 6th. Join us each evening for wonderful services where you will experience the life-changing Word of God through the teaching of Keith Moore. That leaves all day to enjoy the sights and sounds of the Florida Sun Coast area. Start off 2015 by getting built up in faith and attending the Greater Faith Conference at Faith Life Church in beautiful Sarasota, February 2nd through the 6th.